is Sarah, and we are here for another That Creative Life episode with the special guest. I'm Koma Minhas. I am the producer of Dream Girl and the founder of Co Media. My name is Erin Bagwell, and I'm also a producer on Dream Girl and the founder of Feminist Wednesday, a feminist storytelling blog. <laughs> Last night was the premiere of Dream Girl at the White House. So for the people that do not know who you are, give me a little bit of context of what Dream Girl is and how you guys met. Mm -hmm. Sure. So Dream Girl is a documentary film showcasing the stories of inspiring and ambitious female entrepreneurs. We follow five women around and we get to see their lives, their families, and the businesses that they're building. Mm -hmm. And we met via the Kickstarter campaign that Erin started in August 2014. It landed in my inbox courtesy of Marie Forleo, who's another YouTuber. Um, and I saw the trailer that Erin made and I just knew in my heart of hearts it was what I was meant to work on. So I reached out and pitched her on letting me help her run this thing and here we are two that. years later. Kickstarter. So for a lot of the people out in the audience who are YouTubers or whatever but have higher ambitions to make a film, it is kind of... I, I like to think like there's no better time to make films than right now because there's so much opportunity out there. But at the same time, because there's so many avenues, there's a lot of people doing it. And so how did you kind of cut through the clutter of all the people on Kickstarter that have their ideas out there? How do you be unique in a world where there's so many people trying to tell a story? For sure. I mean, full disclosure, it took us six months to produce our Kickstarter. Awesome. So we put a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of effort into the branding, um, into starting social media super early. I mean, the minute we decided to do the campaign, we were on Facebook and Twitter and started building our audience. So we've been building that for months before we even launched. And I think having a really strategic plan, being really thoughtful and you know, we were making a film and so I wanted to make a film trailer and so I invested $4,000 into producing, you know, our four minute video. It was uh, all of my savings basically um, and a really big commitment but we knew we wanted to produce something that was really beautiful and really spoke to the audience. Um, so you have to put in the work. Definitely. You have to, because you can't just throw up anything on Kickstarter right. and expect someone to like fund you. And you also have to tell a story that's relatable For and sure. you know it speaks to people and stuff. So what was it that really hooked you? And you know you saw something in Aaron or the trailer that just really got you, and you're like, I have to be a part of this because I think it's crazy that seeing you guys. I feel like you've been BFS for like 10 years, <laughs> but the fact that you literally met via Kickstarter yes. and you reached out to her and you made it happen. So I mean, what was that like? And yeah. You know, it was just one of those gut instincts of just like, there's nothing else I'm meant to do wow, but yeah. work on. Like I saw the trailer, I saw the Kickstarter trailer that was so beautifully produced that there was so much heart in it, so much soul in it. And I looked at the women on that screen and I was like, I am these women. Like, their experiences are mine. I was a female entrepreneur. I started my company a year and a half prior to that. I was really doing my best to scale to make it work in the media space. And then I saw Erin on screen and her call to action, and I was like, well, I've been called to act. So, <laughs> love it. Love Here it. we go. I love it. And it is so important that you have good design, you have the aesthetics online that makes your project like has the credibility for you know because people want to get involved with something that uh, seems legit and that is a big part of uh, online media I think you have to have a credibility because so many people are doing it and so let's talk about the people in your life hmm. it, you know pursuing your dreams it sounds sexy and stuff but it's hard yeah it's so hard and hardship hits and you know a little bit about that uh, and so when you're in the middle of pursuing your dreams or whatever there's so many points that I feel like you just, it's so easy to call quits. Yeah. And so why is it so important to keep those key people around and surrounding yourself? I love, I forgot who said this, but it's like you are the average of the company, of you, keep. The company you keep. And yeah. that's so valuable. So kind of speak to that. And Yeah, I think that it's kind of been a guiding principle of my life for quite a few years now. Just you are the average of the people you surround yourself with, the five people you spend the most time with, you are the average of those five. That's good. So my goal in life is to just continually develop and amplify who those people are. And it, for me, it's no longer five. It could be 10, it could be 20. There's so many people who I just, who really see me and I see them. And we identify with each other in such a vulnerable, authentic, heart-spaced way 
that it amplifies all of our collective work. Like last night in that room, there was 200 people there. We oversold the event. They had to bring extra chairs in. This is at the White House. But they were just people who have like unrelentingly supported us and loved us and we've nurtured those relationships. We've put a lot of work, time, effort, love, heart into all those relationships. And that's, you know, I think that was the greatest thing for me last night, was looking around the room and being like, everyone here loves us. Well, and especially too, I mean, when you're an entrepreneur and, you know, when you're taking on a big creative project, there's so many different points and there's so many different things you need. Mm. You know, we might wake up one afternoon and really need an accountant that week, and that's our big focus, or really need a lawyer, or really need, you know, more creative help, or need to hire, like, there are so many people, or we might just need mentorship, we might just need support. like. There are so many different parts of the journey and it's constantly changing and constantly evolving. So you really need to have like a giant collective of people that you can lean mm -hmm. on, that mm -hmm. you can call, that you can, or even to help them. So it's right. it's really, really imperative if you're doing any kind of big audacious anything that you have people. Mm -hmm. For the people out people. there who, because <laughs> I, I was lucky enough to grow up in a community where I was, I was always involved in something so I had that community of people. and. What is your advice on someone who finds themselves kind of the lonely editor or the lonely, because uh, it's very, when you do something creative and you have your vision, it's yeah. very easy to get closed off, put yourself in a corner and just, it's my art, I want to do what I want to do. So what's your advice for someone out there that's, ah, uh, yes, I agree with you, but how, how do I find that community? Is there any practical, tangible things that you can tell them to I mean, seek out? I, I think it's really hard. I think, you know, when you're working on something, when you're so passionate about something, and it really is such an expression of your soul, but to find people, to be willing to be vulnerable, to allow people to see it, mm -hmm. and to allow people to shape it, and allow people to make it better. I mean, we um, had an original rough cut about um, seven months ago, and we showed it to our executive producers, and they're you know, our creative allies, and, you know, they asked us to do some soul searching about cutting some characters, and we ended up starting over, mm -hmm. and it was painful, and it was bloody, and we were it's your crying, baby. and, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we, we, we thought we were somewhere in the process, and we weren't, and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'm so proud of the film that we made, That's awesome. and I, I have no regrets about starting over, and I feel so proud, and I feel such a, a sense of strength from starting mm -hmm. over, and we had to be open to taking that advice. Right. I mean, that was a big blow to the ego. That was yes. a big blow to the last year and a half of working on it yeah. to be in that space. But I think if you're, if you want to create the best work possible, you need to let people in. Mm -hmm. You need to let people shape it. You need to let people give you advice and not all advice. I mean, it's so fun. I, I sit with uh, our executive producer, Baus, and he sat next to me, and we would make decisions, and I would say no on stuff, and he would be like, great, it's your film, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But to be able to, again, Find the balance. make that decision for yourself mm -hmm. and not be afraid to take the ego out of it, right. and just say, okay, right. how am I going to make this better? I'd add, I'd add to that that just if there's someone you admire, if there's a YouTuber or creator, someone you find online via Kickstarter, just reach out. Yeah. You yeah, don't know whether that person's going to get back to you, but perhaps their community will. And that's a community of people who are like you, who mm -hmm. admire that person for a similar reason, for a similar... Mm -hmm. Call will literally just email me. Yes. <laughs> In fact, and last two weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah. they, you know, I saw the trailer and it was so good. <laughs> and again, I was impressed by the aesthetic of it. And just the credibility that you had behind this entire project and you guys just seem so cool. <laughs> I mean, side note, being nice to people and being a cool person pays off in the long run. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> work hard, be work humble, hard. Yeah. Like, be, yeah. like be kind. Like I exactly. feel like that kindness and generosity of spirit mm -hmm. has made this journey. Like we found our executive producer, I went to Sundance Film Festival on a whim and awesome. didn't know anyone there and ended up sitting at the uh, restaurant bar and he sat next to me and we just chatted the whole night and by mm -hmm. the end of it he's like, I'd love to mentor you. You're That's a first-time filmmaker. I want to invest in you. And it's just transformed our entire creative journey. And we wouldn't have gotten there yeah. without just being curious That's and amazing. wanting yeah. to know who people are. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling isolated, know that that comes back to two things, that you're, you're nervous about sharing your work, and that's OK, and that you just want to be seen by a community of people. So reach out and let people give you some feedback, but people who you admire and whose work inspires you as well. The distribution of this film yes. is, uh, it's interesting because it really is how movies are kind of changing. Like now, 
you need to focus on digital, you need to focus on online. How are you gonna get this film that you started via Kickstarter into as many people's hands as possible and to your backers and stuff? So talk about the process of the distribution of this film, because it's, yeah. it's interesting, it's the way I think movies are going. Absolutely, I think that first of all, we've been really lucky. I always say Erin's the other half of my brain. She's like my creative lobe and I am a bit more of the analytical lobe and then we just kind of go over, cross over when we need to. Um, so our distribution plan we, has really organically developed over the past year and a half and it's really special that we've been able to think of how we want to sell this film while we're making the film. So our Kickstarter audience that Aaron so beautifully created is like such a strong base of thousands of people who support us, who love us, who see us. By the way, how much money did you raise? Yes! $104,000. $104,000 via Kickstarter, that's amazing. <laughs> Sorry. No, don't worry at all. And then um, it really just kind of came up like, how do we want to get this into people's lives? How do we want to get this in the water supply? How do we make sure these themes are things that are discussed? So we created a licensing model that we are now distributing through and we're in, we are self-distributing the film. So there's three different screenings tiers that we offer. People come to us, they host their own screenings, and then they keep 100% of revenue from their ticket sales. And our goal is to just think of as the largest quantity that we can of screenings to happen globally. So from corporations, so we have Twitter doing 14 screenings at all of their global offices. We have you know how women who are just having their local networking group come over to their house and watch it in their living room. We have people renting out a thousand people theaters to fill the whole theater with people they want to inspire. And we've had 200 screenings requests in 20 different countries yes. so well, far so we're amazing. very excited to yeah and because you want to get that message out in your movie out but at the same time like hello it's, it's this so is important. your job too and yes. you have to make money yes and yeah oh totally and having our art <laughs> and making because, money is part of our family exactly. yes <laughs> love it uh, and because you're going on tour too and so uh what does that look like you're getting sponsorships right yes um, we're working on sponsorships so that's a tier it's honestly you know as much as we've been speaking to larger brands and corporations this really has been bootstrapped friends and family investments, you know, we have had an angel investor, we've had the Kickstarter come in, but really like money's been a hard thing for us, but we just knew if we just stuck to it, if we stuck to the creative process, we could make it work. We now have two full-time people who are working with us on the sales side, so getting these screenings um, booked all around the world. So that screening model is a huge part. Digital sales is gonna be a huge part. We're doing, we're launching our pre-sale on June 9th at the premiere, um, and then we're gonna release the film this fall in September, so really working on the pre-sale. Mm -hmm. We've even, even developed a 20-part content series called Your Moment of Ambition that's gonna be launching in the next few months. Oh, so it's gonna be spare time. Just in our spare You're time. You're killing it. <laughs> but that's, you just need to, yeah. you know, it's like Gary Vee always says, it's that jab, 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 right hook. Exactly. What can you give your audience to exactly. build that momentum? Mm -hmm. And then really just get them invested in your mm -hmm. product and willing to buy. Yeah. And right now is 2016 there's so many different options on how you can monetize mm -hmm. uh, so you just have to be strategic you have to look what opportunities are out there and there's so many brands out there that are willing to be a part of something cool and that people's eyes are going to be on it's just you have to kind of get out there figure out who wants to collaborate mm -hmm. and you know shake the hands yeah, keep having those conversations. exactly exactly life is difficult <laughs> and sometimes when you're in the middle of the hustle and you're in the middle of the grind stuff happens i mean tell a little bit of your story of like what happened when you yeah so I moved to Brooklyn in January from Canada. We were working long distance for 15 months and then I finally, my visa came through for my company. Um, I moved to Brooklyn in January and we were so excited to start diving in. And you know, to be honest, moving is hard. Mm -hmm. um, so it took me a couple of months to get adjusted, to feel settled in. My boyfriend was in Ottawa. We were together seven years and then all of a sudden you're in long distance. So it took me a while to get settled into my life in Brooklyn. And once I was, I went back to Canada for a, some blood work and I came out with a diagnosis for cancer. And it's a really rare but highly treatable form of cancer called dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. And that kind of put us on an even crazier roller coaster and trajectory from March through uh, a week ago yesterday, I found wow. out I was cancer free after surgery. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness is right. You yes. know, something that's really important for me um, in this process was, you know, having Erin was incredible. She really took on a lot of the workload, a lot of, you know, I, I had to really focus on my health and pivot and shift. Mm -hmm. But we were in it together and we would just be as communicative as possible, as real with each other as possible. I really leaned on the people in my life again, like really make that foundation of people around you. Um, and last night just felt like such a celebration of coming through this adversity. Like physically, I hit lowest lows, um, you know, post-surgery, the pain was so intense. 
but this work kept me going. That's good. So if you you're can, doing something that just like keeps you up at night, and alive. Just, it gives you that like knot in your stomach, like the good knot. Yes. Because when you find that one thing, you know when you find it. Yes. And so no matter what happens, it's just like that's something that can actually help you bring you through it. Yes. And also with family and stuff. Um, but then you have to find the balance of you have to keep care of yourself because yeah. I sometimes I just don't sleep and that's something you have to take care of yourself and you know I think later on entrepreneurs like there is that hustle and grind few years and we're not going to sugarcoat it this has been mm -hmm. like the hardest the hardest and most wonderful part of our lives all at once mm -hmm. I was like cry laughing last night because I was like we're having fun we haven't had fun in so <laughs> yeah. long it's been that's so amazing. hard but you know another thing that happened was lots of people when they're diagnosed with something like cancer it really makes them wake up to their life mm -hmm. Um, and I had a moment where I was like, I'm doing everything I had ever dreamed of. Wow. There is nothing else I would it's ever want to do. And it just oh, made nice. me know that this work is what was going to yeah. heal me and that we were going to get through it. And it That's was going to be incredible. That's so good. You guys are so good. <laughs> um, and it was so great being there for the premiere. And it's Thanks such so an impressive film. Coming. Of course, of course, guys. Yes. I will link down the trailer to Dream Girl down below. You guys need to check it out. It's amazing, so inspiring. It doesn't matter who you are. It just inspires you to go out there and kill it and crush it. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye. India is here, where are we going? Hi. We're going to the White House. We out here. We out here. Dream Girl premiere. Dream Girl premiere.